I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Esprino. Now, Esprino is a JavaScript interpreter that runs on very small microcontrollers. So this board here is um, called uh, Olimexino. Um, and it's made by Olimex and it's got this chip on it, which is a um, SD Microelectronics STM32. Uh, so this costs around £20, $30. Um, so first thing we need to do is just plug it in. Um, if you plug it in via USB, if we have a terminal program, um, one of these doesn't come with Windows 7, but you get them on Mac and on Linux. Um, you can download PuTTY really simply for Windows. Um, so it comes up and you're left with a, a prompt where you can enter things. If you type in code, it will just execute it and return the result. Um, you can write commands that turn digital I.O. on and off really quickly. So if we say digital write, this is like Arduino's wiring. Um, LED one to turn it on. And it's just lit up. Or we can turn it off again. Um, now we can do more interesting things and I'm going to show you um, moving a stepper motor around. So this board here uh, contains a driver which all it does is um, make the signals more powerful that, that come from the Olimex you know, so they'll drive this motor. So if we plug that in, um, stepper motors don't work like normal motors. They're um, more like the brushless DC motors that you might get on a model aircraft. Um, so they've got four coils and in order to move them you've got to move all four coils in sequence. So I've found out what pins are wired up on here. Um, they are D9, D11, D12 and D14. So if I make an, an array that specifies what they are Uh, then we can use digital write again, but pass it in array. And when we do that, um, the four elements in the array are treated as four bits of a binary number. So if we do one in here, it hasn't moved. But if we do two, it moves a little bit. And if we do four, it should move again. If you do eight, it should move again. So what we want to do is we want to write the step pattern um, into another array. Um, now we can actually do this in binary that makes it look a bit easier to understand to see what we're um, which pins we're turning on and which ones we're actually turning off. So there we go, we have a pattern and it's interpreted it into um, into the, the actual decimal values. So now we could write a piece of code that um, that will step through the pattern. So if we store the step number here, we make a function called do step. Step plus plus is like C or JavaScript, normally it just increments it. Um, then all we do is we do digital write again to the step motor pins and we look up look it up in the pattern. Now we use modulo here because um, we don't want to go past the end of the array. We just when we get to the end we want to keep going back to the beginning. And that's our function defined. Now if we call it moving around. Now notice it isn't actually moving around in a circle and that's because actually I've wired the pins up wrong. So if we step back through all the commands I entered and we see where I entered the pins, I actually got these two mixed up. They're, they're actually mixed up in the wiring. So if we do this and now we run it, it'll step around in a circle. In fact if we want to step it round quickly we can just use JavaScript set interval. So every 100 milliseconds, tenth of a second, we'll call do step. And here we go. And in fact, you know, we can still use JavaScript and we can still turn other things on and off in the background. Um, 
you notice that set interval actually returned the value 0. Um, so we can use that with other commands like clear interval to get rid of it or change interval which will change the speed at which it updates. So this is good. Um, let's make it a bit slower again. But maybe we want to um, we want to make it step a bit more finely than it is. You can see it's quite jerky at the moment when it's slow. So what we can do is we can go back to the pattern. Um, and one thing you can do with steppers is you can actually um, you can keep two wires on at once. And if you do that, um, it it pulls it between the two of them and gives you more steps. So if I do this. So now we've we've turned our four steps into eight. If I do this, you can see almost immediately as I've hit it, it started stepping at half of the speed, but it's doing it much more smoothly now. Um, another type of control is actually called micro-stepping, where instead of doing this, you actually do it on a more kind of analog basis. So if we go and enter our do step again, um, we can actually write analog values in. Um, now, let's just get rid of this then. Um, and what you do is you, you put a sine wave into them. Um, now, analog right takes a value between naught and 1, and if it's below naught, it just clips it off at naught. So what we're going to make is actually like a little hump here, uh, which will have pretty much the same effect as before. So. Let's do that, and let's just copy and paste this a few times for the four different pins. Now we want to um, sign in JavaScript actually is in radians, which are values that instead of between 0 and 360, they go between 0 and 2 times pi. So we want to effectively move ourselves around by 90 degrees each time. So we have to do it by pi times a half and then pi and then pi times one and a half. So now if I do this it hasn't had a noticeable effect really. Um, but the reason is that we're actually stepping by a big number. I mean if I if I change this to be um, much smaller you'll see now it's moving really smoothly um, and we can change the interval back so that it goes a bit quicker and you see it's starting to move really smoothly let's speed that up a bit there now the other cool thing you can do with S3 now is you've done this, you've, you've written the code if you just hit save, um, now if we reset it, if we actually just completely unplug it and then you plug it back in, give it a bit of power, it'll boot up and immediately it starts where it was when we hit save. And that's it. Thanks for watching.